Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas with biztalkgurus.com. Today we're going to take a look at consuming WCS services in Workflow 4.0. Let's start with a quick disclaimer that this video is based on pre-beta code from October 2008. That other code releases may not look, look or function exactly the same. And that the purpose here is to show concepts and not necessarily the best way to do something. Let's take a look at what we're going to see. First off, we're going to take a look at the new workflow designer. And then we're going to take a look at how to consume WCF services inside a workflow. With that, let's jump into the code. Here is an open instance of Visual Studios 2010. I have an existing solution over here with two projects that have already been created. The first one is Custom Activities, which was created by Microsoft for uh, simple interactions with console applications. The next one is Some WCF Service, which I created myself that we're going to go ahead and consume inside our workflow. So let's start by adding a new project to our existing solution. So here under Workflow 2010, let's add a sequential workflow console app. And let's call this call. WCF in workflow live video. Now the first thing we want to do when we add this new project is we want to add a reference to the custom activities just so they're going to be able to uh, be accessible to us uh, in our workflow. Now let's also make sure we set our workflow project as our startup project so that when we do F5, the workflow is the first thing that gets launched. So now we have the new workflow designer in front of us. Let's take a quick look at some of the new things. We have arguments and variables defined down here in the bottom left. And at the bottom right, we have a mini map and a nice little scroll bar that allows us to zoom in and out of our existing workflow. Let's take a moment to review what we're going to do in our workflow. Well, first off, we're going to prompt the user for the number of dogs that they have. We're going to take the response from the user and use that to call a WCF service, which is going to return a text string about the number of dogs that that user has. Then we want to display this text screen, uh, this text to the user on the screen. So in order to do that, inside our se sequential workflow, we're going to need some variables. So let's go down here to our variables window and define our variables. Let's click on this and we'll see here that the add variables box is not, not available to be selected. That's because our scope inside our workflow is not on anything at the present time. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the sequence workflow, click on variables again, and now you'll see that the add variables box is available. Let's click on add variable. Let's add a number dogs variable as a string. And let's add another variable for the dog response. We'll leave that as a string as well. And here under the value tab, we would be able to define, to define default parameters or default values for these uh, variables if we wished. In our case, we're just going to leave them blank. So now let's take a look at our workflow. The first thing we're going to want is we're going to want to prompt the user. So we're going to use some of our custom activities and we're going to do a right line. And you see as I drag a shape over, the arrow bar will expand dynamically to accommodate that shape. We're going to click on right line. Let's go to its properties via F4. And here I'm going to run and type some text. I use the quotation marks to ensure that it's text that is displayed and not a variable name. And I'm going to say, how many dogs do you have? Zero, two, three. Make sure I use my quoting, my in quotes, tab off that. And this will present that text to the user. And now we're going to want to have a read line to be able to capture that response from the user and click on the read line shape and hit F4. And here I see the out argument of that expression. And here's where I can actually set that 
uh, input value to a variable inside our workflow. We created it called number dogs. Now, just for a moment, I'm going to spell it wrong and hit tab off the field. And we'll see here that we get a real-time validation on that value. It says number dogs is not declared, or number dog. So go ahead and change that to dogs plural, which is how I typed it in the variables window. And now we see we pass our validation. So let's click on that. And now at this point, we are getting our response back from our user. So now we want to go ahead and send that to our WCF service. Let's go ahead and take a look at our WCF service. First, take a look at the operations contract. It's a very simple interface called iService1. And we simply pass in a value parameter and get back the results of the get data. Let's take a look at the actual service. And you see here, it's simply evaluating via a case statement between 0 and 3 and then returning the string to the user. These are important because we need to know the exact names of the parameters when we're going to interact with our WCF service. So now let's go over to our toolbar and grab our client operation and drag that onto our sequential workflow surface. In doing so, we'll now see the client operation here. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And this is very similar to any other WCF call where we have the ABCs. In this case, it's the contract, the binding, and the address defined here. So first, let's take a look at the contract. I click the elliptical, and it's going to open up a new operation contract uh, window. I'm going to go ahead and click New Service Contract. And I'm going to call this I Service one and I want to go ahead and define a new operations contract for that. And I have a nice user interface in order to manually input this information. Now, chances are in future releases of uh, Workflow 4.0 that you'll have the ability to automatically import your contracts. But for now, we have a window where we need to manually define them. I'm going to call the operation Get Data. Make sure I leave it as one way. And now here I want to define my operation arguments. Uh, the first one was called simply value. And that's a string and that's an input. And then I had my response, which was get data result. Going to change that direction to out. And click close. Click OK. And now you'll see here that our operation contract is now defined. Now, by looking at our WCF service, we know that it uses simple basic HTTP binding. So I select that from my dropdown. And now I want to define the address. So I'm going to click to New. And now I have a free form text box where I can define exactly what I want that address to be. In this case, I'm going to have a new system.uri and I know the address that my web service is going to be at. It's going to be localhost, port 2525, and it's called service1.svc. Now this is actually a VB box. So you can actually put code in here, which is why you see the new system.ui entered the way it is. I'm going to tab out of that. And now we have defined our client operation. But now we want to assign the workflow variables to our contract information that we've defined for our WCF service. So I'm going to select our client operation, click F4 to get the properties. And we'll see down here under Section 3 that we can define our operation arguments. We see here our value and our get data results. So here is where I can assign our workflow variable to this value. So in our case, this was number dogs that we want to have as input. And we want to receive as output dog response. I tab off to ensure that I spelled everything correctly. And we're going to go ahead and close that. 
So now I've completed my interaction with our WCF service. Now the last piece of our workflow is to actually return the results to the user on the screen. Now for that I'm going to use another right line, drag that down here, and click on F4 to go to properties. And instead of entering text with quotes, here I simply put our variable, which was dog response. And then to get a pause at the end, I'm going to add another read line, just simply to allow us to view the results on the screen. Now everything looks complete in our sequential workflow. We're going to go ahead and save that. Now I'm going to simply hit F5. And let's see what is going to happen. Now this is running on a VM, so it will be running a little bit slower than on a host OS. Now we see our text in our command window, which we typed how many dogs do you have, 0 to 3. Let's go ahead and type in 1 and see what happens. Now it should be communicating with the WCF service, and the response back is you only have one dog. And we can go ahead and exit out. Let's go ahead and run that once again. This time we'll use a different input and ensure that we get a different result. And again, we have our prompt to how many dogs do you have? Let's go ahead and put in two. And here we see that it says you have the same number of dogs as I do. Now, something else I'll point out quickly is that we now have rich support for debugging in our workflows. So we can actually come right to this shape and hit F9 and add a breakpoint. And now if we ran F5, we would be able to step into the code and go through shape by shape. But to keep this video short, I won't demonstrate that at this time. So let's take a look at what we've learned. We've seen uh, a quick view of the new workflow designer, of what it looks like, and we've seen how to consume a WCF service inside of workflow. With that, I'd like to thank you for watching the video. And again, my name is Stephen Thomas with biztalkgurus.com. Thank you.